I need to send an ambulance out here. What's the problem? Tell me exactly what's happening. I stood up last night. My uh, left knee popped real loud, and uh, the pain's unbearable. Have you been in the floor this whole time, or were you able to get back up? No, I've been in the floor. Uh, we're sending them out there to you, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Joe begins his episode with a trip to the hospital, but once he gets back home, he gets right back to eating. I heard you went to the hospital this morning. How was that? You know, I fell again and did the whole routine that I usually end up having to do. Would you like something to eat? <clears throat> yeah. Me and my brother have always been really close. We had a not so pleasant childhood. Joey's always been bigger, but after that, it just spiraled out of control. If you just went to the hospital because you were too big to get off the floor on your own, then maybe don't have a Hot Pocket as your first meal back. I ate to deal with my feelings and I never stopped. And now I'm just not living a life. If this was all we saw, then Joe wouldn't earn a spot on the list. However, it gets so much worse when his mom shows up. Ready for dinner? Oh yeah, sure. Did that tear your tummy up? Yeah. That'd be good. I can see it in her eyes that she's concerned. I don't think any parent should have to bury their kid. That's the road I'm on right now. Those nachos do look delicious, and it looks like he had a pretty nice shake to go with it. That being said, I'm pretty sure he ate this meal not long after his sister left, and if I'm right about that, that is just way too much food in a short amount of time. When Donald was little, him and his brother, everybody thought they were twins. Then Donald just started getting bigger and bigger. Age five, I was 150 pounds. 16, I was pushing 275. When I was 19, I was about 400. After I got that age, it was too hard to find a scale. Donald, one of the first ever guests on the show, has always struggled with his weight, and one look at his eating habits gives us a good insight into why that may be. I had no problem with eating food. Just like to eat. Let's take a close look at that plate. I see some fried shrimp, mashed potatoes, and french fries, along with some type of dipping sauce at the center. Used to go and get four tacos, two bean burritos, and eat all of it. Wait, you need what now? That is a lot of food for one sitting, and I can't imagine what that many burritos could do to your digestive tract. Getting dressed is the most difficult part of my day, so Amanda has to do it all for me. She's got to put my socks on. She has to help me put my shorts on, which is just humiliating. By the time I'm showered and dressed, all I can think of is my first meal. At Patrick's size, getting showered and changed isn't easy, and apparently he feels like he needs to reward himself with a big, healthy breakfast. Well, maybe not healthy, but definitely big. Do you need help in the kitchen? You could actually get the sausage out if you would like. I live with my wife and my 16-year-old daughter, Haley. If she does stay with her mom, she'll still come back and forth throughout the day and see me, knowing that I needed some help. Looks good. You need anything else? No, mm -mm, I should I'm be good. good. Okay. Okay, verdict's in. Definitely not healthy. Just take a look at that platter. By my count, he's got at least five waffles, four sausage patties, and a whole lot of tater tots. And he's also using the waffles as a type of wrap for the sausage patties. While I do admire the resourcefulness there, it's definitely not a healthy way to get through the day. Corn dogs and tater tots, good for you? Sounds good to me. You gonna cook the corn dogs in the oven? Yes, sir. Well, now it's time for dinner, and that can't possibly all be for Patrick, can it? That's just way too much food. If I don't lose weight, I feel like in a year or two years, I'll wind up, it'll wind up killing me. Looks good, babe. Enjoy. Oh, I am. Oh my God, it is all for him. Every single thing on that plate is fried, which is obviously bad, but that is so much food that I almost can't believe it. I'm hitting the road, headed to Texas to go see the doctor about getting weight loss surgery. I've never driven this far. Period. I'm nervous. I'm worried. Don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm going to see a doctor I've never seen, going to Texas. I ain't never been to Texas. Just haven't never been that far away. Patrick's now heading off to Dr. Now's, so maybe all the bad eating we saw was just his last hurrah before kicking off the diet. I'm just tired of being fat. Do you have anything in mind about what you want for dinner tonight? Some kind of drive through. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. You ready? I want a uh, number nine, I want it large sized. Then I want a, another number nine, no pickles. I want it large sized with a sweet tea, regular side of red beans and rice, a regular side of macaroni and cheese. Just to order a popcorn shrimp and an extra chicken sandwich with no pickles. Would that be all for you? Yes, ma'am. Dude, come on. I get that eating healthy on a road trip isn't easy, but you've got to try harder than that. There's your popcorn shrimp. And then... 
Here's your sandwiches. Red beans and rice is pretty good too. I'd make it better if I had a biscuit to go with it. So he had the entire box of popcorn shrimp and two large sandwiches. Not exactly the kind of thing you should be eating less than a day before you meet a weight loss surgeon for the first time. Every part of my body is on fire at this point. I'm just in so much pain and all I want is for it to be over. Once Brittany helps me get dressed, I can finally eat and I can't wait. For breakfast, usually Terry will come back over after he drops off the kids at school and he'll make me something. How you feeling? All right. Okay, I'm gonna fix your breakfast. After Terry drops the kids off at school, he comes back home to make breakfast for Mercedes. So he takes care of me for the morning. My favorite is the sausage and bacon. Food makes Mercedes happy. She gets what she wants. Wow, that is a lot of bacon. This isn't a meal for a whole family, it's just for the two of them right at home. I'm in so much pain from getting up that I need something to help me start to feel better. And eating does that. It takes all the misery that I have and pushes it away. So once I finally start, I just want to keep going and eat as much as possible. Oh my god, turns out the bacon was just the beginning. First off, I'm pretty sure Terry didn't get a single strip, but Mercedes also ended up with enough scrambled eggs to threaten the chicken population, two slices of toast, and what looks like hash browns. All right, Tanika. <clears throat> Got your food. Everything you wanted. With Terry gone, the next meal commences when Mercedes' sister, Tanika, comes over. Let's see if lunch is any healthier than breakfast. She knows what I like too, so she always brings me something good, and I could never really get full. So I just keep eating because there are some things in life that we're not meant to try and handle. And I don't have to when I have food. And that's something I learned a long time ago. Well, so much for that. Fried chicken, biscuits, and sides, and she is just going through them like she hasn't eaten in weeks. In the afternoon, my mom and my twin brother Marlon will come over and bring me some groceries and some snacks to hold me over to dinner. More visits means more food, and if you've been paying attention so far, you shouldn't be too surprised to find out that her parents aren't bringing a veggie platter. I know my eating is out of hand now, and my body doesn't have a lot more it could take like this. But I don't know how to do this all any different. So I just keep getting worse. That is a lot of donuts and I don't think she's sharing. Maybe it's the editing, but we know for a fact that she's had at least two or three and we don't see anyone else having any. In the afternoon, Terry gets the kids from school and drops them off. And then Kimori will start to make dinner for all of us. Oh good, pizza for dinner. Just what you need after everything else she's had today. My mom's weight has really affected me. I have to do all the work now and she, she just sit there and I have to do everything. And it's hard for me and it's hard for her. Oh, and fried chicken because sure, why not? Come on, Kimura, y'all need to hurry up. I don't want this to be the life I'm giving my kids. And I know I have to find a way to change and stop before it gets any worse and takes my life. Oh, and there's dessert. How foolish of me. My whole life is just staying in this bed. I wake up hopeless and go to bed hopeless. The only thing that helps me forget about it all is the very thing that is killing me and making my life like this. So I'm trapped in this never ending cycle where it just gets worse and never gets better. Shannon's food addiction has made her life a living nightmare and her only temporary escape from her surroundings is, ironically enough, overindulging in food. I was too big so I had to go to an assisted living center. That's when I learned I was over 600. I was 22 and up to 520 pounds. But I knew at that point my weight was out of control. I stayed in a nursing home for a couple years. But when I was around 29, I met Simon. Simon is preparing and you can already tell this is going to be quite the feast. He's always had to be my caregiver and take care of me. And I know that isn't fair. He deserves a more normal marriage where he doesn't have to take care of me. But I've never been able to give that to him. None the whole 10 years we've been together because I've never been able to give up food. Wait, are both of those plates for Shannon? Each one is loaded to the brim and would fill me up for the day, but apparently Shannon can go through both of these in just one sitting. When I'm eating, I'm happy. It's pleasure, it's happiness for me. You don't wanna deal with all the garbage that's going on in your head. You know, I've actually tried to stop eating. When my dad had his gastric bypass five years ago, I failed at it because food is too important to me. Kudos to Simon there, that looks amazing. We've got pancakes, scrambled eggs, and a cinnamon roll layered with frosting. I can't blame Shannon for wanting to eat that, it looks phenomenal, but you shouldn't be eating two plates of it. 
I'm usually here alone most of the day. It's it's lonely. That's why I love eating with my family. It makes me feel, you know, a part of something. How's it going, Sean? Going good. Sausages are cooking, egg is cooking. Food is not only Stephanie's escape from chronic pain, but it's also how she spends most of the time with her family. And oh lord, with that much food, you're gonna be spending a whole lot of time with your family, because nobody can eat that quickly. The smell is making me more hungry. Yeah, I don't know how much syrup you want on there. I'm constantly thinking about food. Yeah. I love just how delicious it tastes, how happy it makes me feel, how like it melts away my, my thoughts. It brings me to life when I eat. The first plate has a few waffles and they just leave her the whole bottle of syrup as if she's gonna need it. Then we've got a serving plate filled to capacity with bacon and sausage. And then the busiest plate of them all has eggs. And well, I'm not quite sure what that is. It might be some kind of breakfast pie, but I don't know. If you have any idea what that is, let me know down in the comments below. But I feel safe saying that that is not good for you. I put the arms up for you. Is the seat all the way back? Yeah. Yeah, you might have to push me even if it's wheels. I know. Mm. I know it's gonna go uphill. Well, you might have to push me up the hill. <laughs> the part I don't like. I forgot it's hard on the hill. Yes. This is embarrassing. <laughs> this is why I don't come. <laughs> the motorized cart might not have enough juice to push Stephanie around the supermarket, which is obviously a pretty big sign that she might need some help. We go to the bakery first? Okay. I'm gonna look at the cakes. I have them. Oh no, don't start out with the cakes. It won't make the cart's life any easier. Okay, anything else that I can reach? Right there, the fudge. Ice cream is my favorite. All right, and then the pizza over there. Oh yeah, on that side. Uh, all your dip. That's all you want? Yeah. You sure? Okay. And as it turns out, the cakes were just the starting point. Just from the footage alone, we see her load up on fudge, ice cream, pizza, and chips, and I'm sure that's just the beginning of all the bad stuff they got. There's your pizza. My life's completely out of control, but I know I need to lose the weight so I can live longer, be healthy. I'm killing myself at this point. And if that wasn't enough, we're having pizza for dinner. Judging by the footage, it's just four slices, but even that is a lot. And once again, I've got to emphasize that this is all just one day's worth of food. I don't want to die. I'm not ready, but I can't do it on my own. Here you go, mama. Thank you. I need help. And sure, why not close out the day with some cake in bed? Boy, Dr. Nile has his work cut out for him here. After I'm done helping VNA and she's dressed, we can finally eat and I start cooking the second I can because both of us been waiting to eat since we woke up. Alan and Viani both suffer with food addiction and it brings out the worst in each other's appetites. And when me and VNA are eating, it's like we're in this cocoon where we are safe and there's nothing we can hurt us. And for that short while, all the pain in our lives is gone. That's what food has done for me since I was really young. It's been saving me my whole life. Well, maybe nothing emotional could hurt you in that cocoon, but it's clear that it's physically destroying the both of you. My life started out difficult. My mom was 17 when she had me, and my father wasn't part of my life because he never stayed around. So aside from my brother, who was one year younger than me, I was on my own a lot because my mom had a lot of work. Oh boy, it's always something seeing it all laid out on a plate like that. It's almost intimidating. Yeah. Oh yeah, give me the money. Here's the money. Of course, breakfast is just one meal, so let's see what they get for delivery. Alan is the first person that I've actually been able to have any type of meal with. I feel like there's no judgment. We give each other this freedom to eat what we want, so we're both just eating and being happy together. And when I'm eating, I can forget about my life and how miserable it is. Yikes. Two full Tupperwares loaded to the brim for both Viani and Alan. Now, I'm pretty sure each Tupperware is supposed to feed one person, so they're basically getting enough for two people right now on top of that massive breakfast. My mom was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver. The doctors, they couldn't do anything for her. I think my mom was an alcoholic, and I just didn't understand as a kid because her liver was completely destroyed. I was 15 then and close to 400 pounds, and she was so disgusted with me that she just stopped talking to me. Well, we can clearly make out that it's pasta, and you know, that's not exactly a low-carb meal. When I wake up, I try not to think about my life and how bad things are. It's already almost impossible for me to stand and get around now. So I'm trapped in this bed. So I have a caretaker named Denise. First, I take my medicine, 
And then before I can start anything with my day, I have to eat. You can uh, start breakfast. Okay. Cindy needs a personal care provider to care for her day-to-day -day needs, and that includes cooking and preparing meals. During the week, I work with Miss Cindy. I get her up, she takes her medication, and then I cook a big meal. But Miss Vela makes the food choices. I can't tell her no. I work for her. So I just follow what she wants. Well, hello, Miss Cindy. Breakfast is here. Normally the food itself isn't too bad, but the portions are egregious. This time though, we got something a little different as starting the day with three eggs and two bacon strips is actually pretty normal. Having fries on the side though, yeah, that's a little weird. I was first one when I was eight years old. The person that molested me was a family friend. I didn't fully understand it, but I knew it was a violation. And that was the first time I realized if I was eating, I felt a little better, so. The food was a comfort for me. Okay, breakfast must have been a false flag. Cindy clearly has a problem with overindulging in her meals. But as I started to eat more and put on some weight, I realized if I could keep getting bigger, maybe then he'll leave me alone. Over the next year or two, I started to get a lot bigger and got up to around 140 pounds when I was 10. I just kept eating as my way of dealing with the world. But that family friend that was doing that to me finally stopped. But I was still using food to deal with the emotional pain that it caused me. From the looks of it, lunch consists of a whole lot of fried chicken, biscuits, mac and cheese, and corn. This was definitely supposed to be a family-sized meal shared among multiple people, but Cindy's able to eat it all by herself with no issues. When you get to be this size, you're definitely broken mentally. I mean, I know I'm fat and I have the ability to change it but I can't stop eating because when I'm eating, it's the only time I get relief from the physical pain. As you can tell, Mark is trapped in the spiral of food addiction, knowing that he's his own worst enemy and can't overcome the short-term highs he gets from a good meal. Hey, good morning, how are you doing? Good, what are you thinking for breakfast? We got eggs and waffles, I think uh, a little bit of chorizo. Oh, okay. Thanks, mama. I'll see you in a minute. Mark's mother is making breakfast, and now it's time for the feast to commence. My dad tells me what to do, but it has a reverse influence on me. Did you guys already eat? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's that. Thank you, mama. You're welcome. The more you come at me like that, the more it makes me want to eat and go down that road. Like, it's always been a steady uphill struggle. We've got eggs that are basically drowning in cheese, a huge side of chorizo, and he's combining them both to make his own little breakfast burritos because you just needed to have those extra bread carbs. The grocery store, it sucks. Just finding a trolley that I could sit in. It's like, whew, give me a minute. I don't know how that's gonna fit. This isn't gonna work. You're gonna have to get up and push a cart. I can't. You gotta push a cart, Mark. That's all you can do. You know you've let yourself go when you're too big for the motorized carts at the supermarket. I know if something doesn't change, I don't have long. I rode the scooter behind him so that he could take a break. I try not to enable him any longer. They got ice cream down there? Just one of those or two? But I still do so often. We can't live this life. We can't continue to live this life. It's a hard road. We don't see everything Mark and his father buy, but we do see enough to know that absolutely none of it is healthy. I mean, the first thing he does is grab three sodas, then get two boxes of ice cream. Mark can manipulate me and Rocky both for the food, mostly me because I feel so darn sorry for him. We are not making Mark pay any rent, any utilities, nothing. We are not holding him accountable. I'm really excited. This could really change your life. No, I'm not going through all for no reason. <laughs> Good. You know what? We'll go through it together. And now the family is having a big cookout, and once again, I don't think Dr. Niles gonna want him eating that. Barbecue meat isn't great, but it can be fine in moderation, but the key word there is moderation. Comfortable? I am. Yeah, this is nice. It's a new beginning. Are we eating or are we gonna get uh, on the road? Yeah, we're gonna get on the road, but we'll get the gas. His first trip to Dr. Now has barely begun and he's already asking for a meal. Well, maybe he can make it a healthy one, seeing as he's going to meet a weight loss doctor. I'm really struggling with wanting to eat, even though I know I'm gonna get weighed when I get to Dr. Now's. Is it good, Mark? It's okay, it gets the job done, right? What's the job? Food. Food? 
Oh, come on, dude. Seriously? A cheeseburger and fries? Look, I know you haven't officially met Dr. Now yet, but you should know that this is the type of food you need to quit if you ever want to lose weight. I'm usually here. I can't stand for more than a minute without starting to break into a sweat. My knees start to shake. So I can't wait too long to sit down because my legs will start to give out really soon. And all I really want to do is eat. My girls help prepare our breakfast and I rely on Adriana and Tatiana to do most of the cooking for me. Crystal and her kids prepare breakfast together every morning, but the food pyramid isn't all that well represented. This isn't the life that I wanted for my girls. I should be able to do more for them than what I am able to do. And I feel bad about that. But then when I think about it and get depressed about that, it makes me want to go eat. And it feels like it's been this way for most of my life because eating is the only thing that makes any of the bad feelings that I have go away. Okay, we've got the usual breakfast foods, bacon, eggs, and pancakes. And while the portions aren't exactly great, what stands out to me is the whipped cream. That is so much whipped cream, it's basically smothering the pancakes. I was molested by a family member, and the horror of being molested was more than what I could deal with. And so that was one of the hardest times in my life. And through it, I just ate constantly. Whatever I could get and however much I could get, I ate it nonstop. And by the time I was 12, I got to about 200 pounds. So breakfast is served buffet style, which is good because it means the food they prepared is way too much for just one person. However, based on the footage, we could see that Crystal is basically running laps around those two kids. I can only do stuff with them that I could do sitting down. So the both of them have to take on a lot around the house that they shouldn't have to have on them at their age. And I know it's hard for her to do all that on top of her schoolwork. And she does her own laundry and cleans her own room. And both of them have to do the grocery shopping. The family comes over for dinner and Crystal's kids prepare a big meal for the occasion. I need more macaroni and cheese. Oh. And what I wish is I could just let them be kids and not have all the responsibility on them like that at their ages. But that's not possible as long as I'm at this size and keep eating like I do. The good news is that Crystal's plate contains some broccoli. The bad news is that there's enough mac and cheese on her plate for the Hubble telescope to pick up. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to have more than that. I'm gonna have to have more than that on there. The only thing I know that can help me when it gets bad is food. And it makes me forget the pain and everything that comes with it. But at the same time, I know that food has taken my life. And apparently that's not enough for her. Crystal goes in for yet a second plate and even tells her uncle to keep on serving her because what she has just isn't enough. 